Hey, welcome to our Monday live broadcast. Today is May 7th and today's subject is going to be around the idea of fat bombs and red wine being the secret to success with your struggles with weight loss and or maybe dieting habits and what you're trying to do to improve your nutrition. So if you're new, welcome. My name is Diane. For the past 25 years, I've been helping women find nutritional plans and fitness programs to help them look and feel their best and live their most authentic life. And here in this community, we do that through the practice of intermittent fasting and creating a keto-like lifestyle for ourselves to help us look and feel our best and live our most authentic life. I always ask that you please leave me a comment in the comment section letting me know that you jumped on today either live or on the rebroadcast so I know you were here and I can engage in conversation with you um, after we're done covering the subject for today. Fat bombs and red wine. They're all the advertising and marketing craze right now um, with the idea of the keto like lifestyle and for us to really kick the dieting mentality and a lot of marketing um, ad work that's out there and a lot of the marketing terminology that's being used in the nutrition field and the diet field is geared toward grabbing us at um, our emotional I don't know weakness or vulnerability or that place where we're like yes finally a program where i can have all the things i want to have and i'll still lose weight or still have the physique i want or still be healthy and i want to caution you on um those type of marketing ploys and advertising keywords and and phrasing and emotional like clickbait type of marketing philosophies and if you understand what living in intermittent fasting and a keto like lifestyle really is and if you understand what happens with your own body chemistry then you could see where incorporating things like fat bombs and red wine could really get us into some trouble and and the the area that um you know is the marketing spin and the emotional you know, aha moment for us as we're scrolling through Facebook or we're scrolling through Instagram or we're watching videos on YouTube and people are telling you that you can have fat bombs and red wine and you're still going to be able to manage this spe specific diet program. Um, it's just not true. If if you're living a keto like lifestyle and you're incorporating a fasting window, we know through the practice of doing that, that one of the beautiful things about fasting and merging in a keto like lifestyle is the pure simplicity of it. And the fact that we no longer have to think about putting in unnecessary snacky foods or putting in these quick fix type of treats to satisfy us that once we really get a hold of our hunger hormones and we take the time to slow down and listen up to the signs and signals that our body is sending us, then we realize that we can really get by with just plain old food. And that we have, we don't really have to create things like fat bombs, which are generally just, you know, uh, coconut oils and nut butters and chocolates and you know kind of roll together in little bite-sized things that we can kind of snack on throughout the day that are going to keep our our fat content high you should be and probably would be advised to manage your macros on on those type of diet plans um because you're upping your intake of food um to the point where it becomes almost unnecessary and becomes an overuse of food you can get by with just plain old food and fat naturally occurring in your diet without having to create fancy little fat bombs and then when you put on top of that red wine you now have put yourself in the position you were in before you probably started searching for a new way of living or a new nutritional plan or a new diet and that is you've just now over consumed your body's um, energy type of nutrients right so we know that fat is a energy source that our body really does prefer to work from and we also know that carbohydrates that we consume that turn into um, glycogen that's stored in our body is also another form of energy 
Well, where we get in trouble is when we are living a life of both energy nutrient systems being at a high level. So if you're consuming fat bombs and consuming red wine, now you've just put tons of energy sources into your body and your body is going to naturally burn the glycogen first. We've talked about that a lot here before because it's readily available and it's easy. And if you're not doing the right type of activities or you're not giving up something else so you can have your fat bombs and your red wine, then you're going to put yourself back into that position of you're not able to burn off all of the energy sources that you're putting in your body, that being that fat. And that fat's going to go back into storage and it's not going to get utilized the way we really want to utilize it when we are practicing an intermittent fasting and a keto-like lifestyle. But those marketing trigger words and the emotional buy-in for that does work. We get suckered into believing that we can have it all and still have the health, the energy, the vitality, and the body that we want to have. And the reality is it's just not true. That we really have to go back to the basics of understanding where our body works best and what our body needs to just sustain itself. And then anything over that is going to create some sort of backup and put you back into that state of, oh my gosh, I you know, was doing so well and I lost so much weight and my body wasn't inflamed anymore and I had so much energy and now I've incorporated these things and I'm back to the way I was and I'm a failure and this doesn't work and we go back down that cycle again. So I want to make sure that you are thinking wisely when you're jumping into those type of experiments or into those types of philosophies with what's happening in the nutrition, diet, and exercise world as far as what you can get away with. Remember, anytime you put something in that's extra, you have to be willing to make the sacrifice to take something else out, that you can't have it all. Now that doesn't mean that you have to live some humdrum life and you can't have any frills and you can't have any treats or you can't have a glass of wine. That's not true either. You just have to make sure that you're understanding what happens to your body's chemistry when you start adding all of these extras back in and does that fit your philosophy or what it is that your body needs for you to receive or achieve whatever result that you want to have. I can tell you that I have never consumed a fat bomb and have absolutely no desire to do so. I would so much rather just eat food. I would much rather have an avocado or I'd much rather have a can of olives and have the food for me in its readily available source without me having to go out and buy 16 things to put into a recipe to roll out some fat bombs. And I also don't want to incorporate those extra types of things into my life because yes, there might be a time when I want to have a glass of red wine and I don't want to put my body in that position where it's being inundated by energy food that I'm not going to have the opportunity to burn off. And if you can't burn it off, it just ends up backing up into your system and causing you problems. So as always, I ask you to please think about things before you jump in or get you know um, emotionally trapped into some promise that something's gonna work for you that seems like a dream um, and the reality of it being that there is no such thing you can't eat whatever you want and achieve a certain type of look you cannot eat whatever you want and have a certain type of health you cannot eat whatever you want and have a certain type of energy that's just the solid truth and the facts of the way our bodies work and the way society is and the way we have been fooled in the past about dieting and what we can get away with. Trust me, there are plenty of amazingly uh, tasty foods that you can put together to satisfy whatever it is that you wanna satisfy as far as emotionally with consuming nutrients. Yes, you can have a glass of wine. Yes, you can have a cocktail. Yes, you can have a piece of chocolate. You can have whatever it is that you want to have as long as you understand that whatever you put into your body is going to create a chemical reaction 
and that chemical reaction is going to then create a result. And if you're okay with those decisions that you're gonna consciously make for yourself, then what you're doing is fantastic for you. But by no means are fat bombs and red wine going to be the combination of things that are gonna get you to the point of looking and feeling your best and living your most authentic life. Because if you're walking around every day feeling sluggish, or you're walking around every day feeling like your hormones are out of balance, if you're walking around every day feeling like you are poofy and self-conscious about how your clothes are fitting on your body, then you're not living your most authentic life. Living your most authentic life doesn't necessarily mean that you are cramming a bunch of food down your throat or drinking alcoholic beverages or throwing you know all common sense out when it comes to nutrition. Living your most authentic life means that you're consciously making decisions that are going to get you to that point of what I always say here, looking and feeling your best while you are living your most authentic life. And you have to be present emotionally and mentally in your life in a happy state for you to really be living your life authentically. And you want to be feeling your best. If you're feeling your best and you're living your most authentic life, I promise you, you will in turn also be looking your best. And all of that matters. There are no magic quick fixes. There's no magic pills. There's no magic sauce. There's no magic fat bones. And there's no magic way that you can put red wine into your life and have it all. You have to understand that there will be consequences that you have to pay. And sometimes that is okay. Sometimes there are those events that you want to go to when you want to have your wine or you want to have your margarita. I, I understand. I do the same type of thing. But you have to make sure that you're healthy enough about your relationship with food and where you've come and where you want to go that if something doesn't work out for your body chemically and it sets you back, that you're gonna be okay with those decisions and it's not gonna make you go back to that negative self-talk, feeling like you're totally losing the battle or that you wanna throw in the towel because you made a decision that didn't work. You have to go into these decisions making sure that you're very informed and again, understanding what happens in your body when you're taking in extra fat and you're taking in extra carbs? What is your body going to do with those things if you don't know how to put your body in a state where it can burn it away and then get you back to that point of being in that fat adaptive state or the energized sense of calm, which we always talk about here too. So I just wanted to make sure that we discussed what's kind of going on as a fad in the diet industry right now. It's all based on healing yourself emotionally. We've been doing that here for the last couple of years. So I know a lot of you are understanding what I'm talking about here about knowing that if you're going to put something in like that, that there's got to be something that you can give up to balance yourself out. And sometimes that's totally worth it. And then other times it simply is not. Your best bet is always just going to go go back to eating nutritionally dense food that your body has sent you signs and signals letting you know that it's working for you. And if your body's sending you those signs and signals that something's not working for you, it doesn't matter what other people are saying. It doesn't matter what other people are telling you is right. If it's not right for you, it's not right for you. And you have to just go back to being very confident with the relationship you have with yourself in your body and understanding those signs and signals and knowing that you have the power to make the changes that you need to make so that you can ultimately look and feel your best and live your most authentic life. So I hope that clears things up for you guys. Don't, um, don't be desperate, I guess is the other thing that I want to say. And, and I'm saying that from a desperate woman, an old desperate woman. I don't, I'm not desperate anymore by any means because I'm very confident in what I know works for my body now after experimenting for a couple of years. Don't be desperate and think that if someone is marketing to you, um, trying to get to that emotional weak point that some of us still have, that you're stronger than that and that you know better than that. And if it, if it seems too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. And just stick with what you know is working for you. Don't jump, don't jump ship for something that you think is going to be um, easier or, um, or allow you to do whatever you want. There is no such thing um, that, uh, that 
or philosophy of nutrition that says that you can do whatever you want. If I could do whatever I wanted, trust me, I would be eating um, Krispy Kreme donuts every day, um, sitting on the couch, probably eating some Lay's potato chips and drinking margaritas all night. But the reality is that's not gonna get me where I wanna go in life. Um, that's gonna make me a very sick and miserable woman. And, um, and after a while, that's not fun either. So we wanna make sure that, again, we go back to common sense and we go back to listening to our body and knowing what makes us look and feel our best. Um, so I'm gonna jump onto Facebook really quick. Hang on just a second, YouTube, and I will come in and welcome everyone and answer questions and comments there for you guys. Um, and welcome to anyone who's in our May course who's jumping on live with us. Our May course started on Saturday, so you guys are in your first week. Hopefully you're understanding um, that hungry is where the magic is happening and you guys are feeling a sense of hungry and it's invigorating you and making you feel super empowered about what, the, what you're doing with yourself over these next couple of weeks. Sandy, hello. Uh, Janet, hello. March and April class. And nice to have you here, Barb. Excited to hear about this topic. Awesome. Cindy, hello. And if you guys um, on uh, Facebook, if you type at A into the comment section, you'll get on our email list for sure. Cindy, hello. Max, um, oh, it's Nina. Sorry about that. Um, Feb and March, course graduate. Thanks for today. Oh, you're super welcome. Janet, I when I started keto, I made tons of treats, fat bombs, cookies, and ate with abandon, believing that it was all okay. And all it did was keep my weight up and make me feel bloated. Thank you, Janet, for sharing that. I totally agree that some of those things are super, super unnecessary. And then you end up going out and you end up spending a bunch of money on something that's that's supposed to be the magic piece that's going to make everything fit together for you and then you just end up wasting your money um so uh so always be very cautious of those kind of things sandy uh first fast went well thanks oh awesome sandy super super glad to hear that uh gerasol i'll um add me we'll get you added in Kristen, hello jenny um hi diane and all of you i effers jenny is uh she's been hanging out with us for a super long time she's done some great stuff with her own health um, and well-being so good to have you on with us Jenny Stephanie I've never heard of fat bombs good don't worry about them you don't need to know about them Stephanie Schmidt hello um, from Cyprus Sandra hello Barb Fultz you're amazing and thank you for all your words of knowledge and encouragement oh you're super welcome save your money you guys you don't need to be making any fat bombs just eat fat just eat food um, and I and then hey here's this other side of it if fat bombs do it for you and they're that thing that just make you happy because we just have foods that make us happy and if fat bombs are the thing that get you through and help you and they don't take you off of the goals that you have set for yourself then by all means put fat bombs into your life my whole point of today's message is that they're not the magic fix you don't need to go out and add all of those things in if you're doing fine with what you're doing then you're doing fine with what you're doing um, and if you feel like you need to add something in then maybe that's something that you want to experiment with but by all means it's not going to be that thing that's going to get you to that success point especially for my new fasters and women who are truly trying to heal their body the best thing that I can tell you when you're trying to heal your body and balance out your hormones is less is more. Simplify things as much as you can and just eat food. I say even avoid recipes. Just take one ingredient foods that get the food that come that that you can get as close to coming out of the ground as you possibly can and throw them together and make that a feast and really try to stray away from all the pressures of recipes and um, ketogenic this and um, macro this and just put food together that's clean and wholesome and makes you feel energized and that's the best thing that you can do once you get your body healed and you get everything balanced out that's when you can really afford to start doing some experimenting um, but by all means if you're still a little cautious and a little bit nervous about what you're doing with your fasting less is more take all those fancy little things out um, Lisa had my first 17 hour fast today, no creamer in coffee and I felt awesome and you didn't die, which is the most important thing. So again, doing things like putting a bunch of things in our coffee, when you're learning how to fast and really, really heal your body, they're just not necessary. Now, when you get a little bit more advanced or you want to start getting back into some really intense workouts, then we can talk about putting some tools back into your day that will really help you get more out of your body. 
But while we're slowing down and really healing our body, we want to take out as much as we can and then figure out what our needs are and what our wants are. And we're going to find that our life can be really simplified by only putting in what we really need and keeping the wants to minimal minimal times in our day or minimal times in our week or minimal, time, minimal times in our month where we can actually some, save ourselves some money and save ourselves some time and save ourselves a lot of work. Um, that's really what we're getting at here is the do nothing, embrace everything. Uh, Lisa, in your May course, awesome girlfriend. Laura, you had me at Krispy Kreme. <laughs> I know, girl, I am a Krispy Kreme fan and um, and here's the deal, life's too short to not have um, Krispy Kremes in your life, right? So now if I eat Krispy Kremes every day, I'm not gonna look and feel my best and therefore I won't be living my um, most authentic life. Now, if I have Krispy Kremes every now and then, but that's fine. I just have to know when to build them in and when I can handle how my body is gonna to respond to those extra sugars and extra carbs, and so that's all fine. But you can really only do that well when you're healed. Um, let's see, uh, Carlene, my body takes over 40 hours to go into a very light fat burning mode. I was astonished. Is this normal? I felt a bit, bit discouraged. I don't know, uh, I can't really comment on that because I don't really know enough about your history to understand why it took 40 hours to do that. So that's something you'd have to kind of just play with and do some experimenting with and see if you can get it um, there a little faster. Maggie, homesick today, so catching you live September and January graduate. Looking forward to the next level course. Yeah, and I'll talk about that in a second, Maggie. Hope you're feeling better. I think you're having some, are you um, having some allergy problems probably in the Houston area? I know we're feeling it here in uh, North Texas as well. Uh, Stephanie, having some avocado today made me happy. Oh, uh, that's awesome, Stephanie. So Stephanie has she's been around with me for a while too and um i i kind of busted her chops one day this is about a year ago stephanie uh i hope you uh, remember this situation when she took a snack to work that was i think it was goldfish or something um and uh and i told her that eating an avocado was a much better snack for a grown-up so now she's snacking on avocado so i'm super proud of her margaret i'm so overwhelmed how can i find out about your program uh margaret um or kara can you please give margaret some information she's on facebook um, and Melanie um, from South Africa, good to have you here, Melanie. And then Anne, yes, agree that it's so much easier starting out to just eat single ingredient foods takes the anxiety out of eating. Yeah, absolutely. And then you can't do it wrong. If you're eating one ingredient foods, there's really no way you can mess those up. So just keep it super simple. Yep, goldfish, right. Uh, Joanne, hello, Joanne from New Jersey. I'm glad I was able to see this live. I'm glad you were here too. Haven't seen you in a bit. Cheryl, hello, Pamela, checking in. Girlfriend, good to see you. Um, Melissa, love from Dublin. Oh, good to have you with us. Can I oil pull in the morning first thing? I oil pull for my oral health with coconut oil. Also, can I add Himalayan pink salt to my fasting morning water? Yes, you can add salt. Um, I guess if you have to oil pull, sure. But I really encourage you guys when you're when you're first starting out with fasting that you don't do anything. And um, the coconut oil uh, could be enough to um, to kind of take you out of that truly fasted state when you're first trying to get to that energized sense of calm. So I say t put it in the later part of your day. Maggie from Ireland. Um, April from Albuquerque, December alumni, Karen, I finally caught you live, yes. Amy, never did a fat bomb, glad to hear this. Uh, yeah, you don't need them. I, they're a treat, I mean, a fat bomb is kind of like having a cookie or a, you know, some other granola bar or a, a protein bar or something like that. It's added in and you really don't need to do that. Just eat your feast and if for a lot of people who are down to now one meal a day, which is where I've been the last couple of days, including workouts. Um, where would I put a fat bomb? Like I don't need, I mean, I would have to create another opportunity to have a meal because anything that you put in you is considered your feast, whether you call it a meal or a snack or a fat bomb or whatever. So I would have to create another opportunity to feast and that would be counterproductive of where I'm at with my fasting and my exercise and my feasting. So it would be overfeeding me at this point and where I'm at with, with my body. So um, you have to think about that too. Uh, Lori, uh, fasting is the magic fix. You got it, girlfriend. Uh, Thies, hello. Uh, I just signed up to receive your recipes. Awesome, Don. And Carlos. Oh, nice. I always love when these um, weird people come on. Okay, so YouTube um, and Facebook, know this. 
you do not have to create extra work for yourself to be successful at this. The best thing you can do is pick a window of your day, we call that the fasting window, and do nothing. And then create an environment during your feasting window where you're eating nutrient dense foods that are consistent of conscious carbohydrates, moderate amounts of protein, and high amounts of good quality fat. You do not have to create fancy things to make that happen. We have that food readily available to us already. So simplify your life, enjoy the time you have. Don't have to spend a bunch of time, a bunch of time in the kitchen prepping food or creating fancy things. Just enjoy food as it is. And then as you progress through this journey and you become really confident in what you're doing in your fasted state and you're really confident about food choices that you're making, then you have the opportunity to do some experimenting and adding some of those fun things back in, but not now, not while you're really in that point of really trying to heal your body. Stephanie, I have to watch this later at a doctor appointment right now with no headset. Okay, awesome. Uh, Christina, work from 7 to 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. Is it okay that I just count 16 hours for my last meal, but but reverse time from the normal people. Yeah, the beautiful thing about fasting and feasting is that you create your own optimal time to fast and feast. So there's no wrong way and there's no right way as long as you understand that fasting really means fasting and anything that you put in your body um, is considered feasting or dirty fasting. And if you're going to dirty fast, you have to understand the chemistry behind what you're doing to your body. So um, you create the windows, Christina, that work best for you in your life um, and that will make you most successful there's no there's no perfect window at all for fasting and feasting Beth make course now at work and sneaking in a listen checking water today and feeling great awesome life how do I stop from binge eating when doing one meal a day um, you just have to set some parameters and boundaries for yourself um, and maybe set a window that you're eating at and sit down and prepare food um, is oftentimes what I think too I know he, when, when I'm just cut loose in the kitchen and I'm not like thinking about eating a meal with my family, I can kind of binge as well. But if I really think about sitting down and eating a properly plated meal and I only you know, make the decision to eat what's on my plate, then I'm done and, I, and I'm good to go. So a lot of it's up here and what you're telling yourself and the boundaries that you're setting for yourself. And so you gotta spend a lot of time talking through that and making sure you're setting up those boundaries for sure. Um, so I hope that helps. Please, uh, because I'm now doing one meal a day, should I benefit from your course? What are your thoughts and thanks? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you'll always learn something um, and um, have some aha moments and maybe learn something about those times when you're not eating one meal a day or just understanding how your body systems work. Um, so I, I would think everyone would benefit for sure. Christina, thank you. Sparkling water helps me a lot at work and I've done my 20 hour fast from last Saturday. Awesome. Cool. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me today. I know that these things like fat bombs and some of the emotional marketing that's going on uh, with social media and the diet industry, um, you know, a lot of what's going on in the intermittent fasting type of world and, and how it's catching fire and how a lot of people are really able to reverse a lot of things that they were struggling with, including uh, weight problems and health issues and hormonal balance issues and all those kind of things, um, really kind of put the nutritional industry and the food industry in sort of a little bit of a panic because they have nothing to sell us anymore. So be weary of those things um, like multi-ingredient uh, quick fixes for your fasting and your feasting. They're really not necessary unless it is just one of those things that you find absolute pleasure in and it doesn't keep you from hitting the goals that you want to hit. And just remember that wine has its place. Um, alcohol will always have its place in your life and it has to be counted in as one of those things that you have to have a give and take for. You can't have wine and everything else. That's just not the reality of what we're trying to do with, with where we are in this stage of life and what we want to do with our body chemistry. So make decisions for yourself that are based on how you want to look and feel and then make sure that you're able to uh, handle the consequences that come with some of those decisions as well. Uh, Margaret, this has been a great class and the April class and haven't had a binge in one month. Awesome. So there you go. Uh, life, how do I stop from binge eating? Margaret just kind of helped you with that. So what she did in our course is she kind of learned how to emotionally control what she's doing with her eating and she doesn't binge eat anymore. 
Um, Di, can you please send the link for the course? Thanks so much. Yeah, um, these, can you do me a favor? Can you send me an email to dianeparhamfitness at gmail.com? You can find my email on my YouTube channel and we'll get you the link for sure. So not a problem. Uh, Lucy, hello from Spain. I'm in a small village near Barcelona. Lucky you. Barcelona is absolutely gorgeous. Um, was in the November class and had been following the keto like eating very closely but had a fresh croissant today oh heaven I know that didn't make you feel good and I've been testing all the different olives offered at the bars along the beach and the salads are always served with a bottle of extra virgin olive oil and balsamic vinegar for us to add ourselves I'm in keto heaven oh I I bet you are that sounds absolutely dreamy so good for you soak all that up and Margaret, you're so welcome for the link. And then um, on YouTube, just go to my YouTube channel. You can find me either on Instagram or Facebook there, or leave me a comment. If you're catching this live, all the comments disappear from YouTube, so I can't interact with you after we broadcast this live. So if Kara doesn't get you the link um, on YouTube before we end this broadcast, then just feel free to make sure that you send me a, an email, and then I'll reach out to you and get you all the information that you need. So all of my May course students, can. Congratulations, you just got through your first fast together. I'm super excited for you. Um, and then know that if you want to jump in with us, our registration is open for our June course. And for those level two students, really quickly, we have made the decision today to officially start our level two course on June 2nd, which is a Saturday. Um, I kind of looked at the calendar and with Memorial Day coming up, I didn't really want to start a course when we had a holiday right in there. So we decided to push it out to June 2nd and registration will hopefully be up and open in the next week um, so that we can get you guys all signed up and in place and ready to go for our June 2nd level two uh, course start date. And we also did that June 2nd date so that our current May students uh, can jump in with us on the level two course as soon as their course um, completes in just a couple of weeks. So we got a date and we're ready to get you guys started on level two fasting, feasting, and fitness. Have a super afternoon, uh, you guys, and I will see you Wednesday, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we'll pick another topic to talk about that will get us in that IF keto-like lifestyle. Have a great afternoon.